Hello, my name is Keshwani. That is K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 142. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told that a third of P's money is equal to Q's. We are further told that three seventh of Q's money is equal to is three seventh three seventh of Q's money is equal to R's. In all, three of these people, P, Q, and R, they have two hundred seventeen dollars. What do they each have? Very simple, very straightforward question. Let's do it together, shall we? So we have three people, P, Q, and R. P, Q, and R. P. Q and R and all together we are told in all they have $217. So we have Mr. P who has P dollars, Mr. Q who has Q dollars but we are told that three we are told that a third of P is equal to Q. Q is equal to third of P. So let's do that here. This Q is equal to a third of P. So that's the that's the Q. We also know that R is 3 seventh of Q. 3 seventh of Q equals R. So if you take 3 seventh of Q, this quantity equals R. But that's not enough. We're not going to stop right here. And now we're going to replace the Q one more time. Q we know is P over 3. Q we know is a third of a P. A third of a P is equal to Q. So we're going to make the substitution one more time so that we have one variable. So this Q here that we see here, this Q that we see here, we're going to replace it one more time by a third of a p, p over 3. That's all. And that has to equal 217. What can we do here? Well, tell you what, we're going to keep it simple. I need a little bit more room, so I'm going to squeeze it out here, and you will see in a second why. And now we're going to start our work. We're going to start our work. We have a denominator of 7 times 3 here, if we can get the same denominator here of 21 and 21 here and 21 here, we can forget about the denominator, we can ignore it, the denominator will, will no longer play any role, the denominator will cease to exist, or cease to play the role rather, not, not cease to exist that is. Here we have a 3, let's introduce a 7, let's multiply it by 7 over 7. So now we have a 7 times 3 in this quantity, we already have 7 times 3 in this quantity, and we need a 21 here, let's multiply this by 21 over 21. And let's introduce 21 over there as well in the denominator by multiplying it by 21. 21 over 21. There we go. Everything has a denominator of 21, we can simply ignore it. And we can start our process. 21 times p is 21p plus 7 times p is 7p plus 3 times p is 3p and that has to equal 217 times 21. Let's do it on the top. Twenty-one. Oh, that's very simple. 7 times 3 is 10. 10 plus 21 is 31. So 31p has to equal 217 times 21. Now we know what we notice is that 31 is a prime number. 31 is a prime number. Obviously, 31 and a 21 will have no common factor because it has no factor. It's a prime number, which means our only hope is to figure out if 217 is some multiple of 31. Listen very carefully, okay? Are you with me so far? Did you understand? Obviously, there is nothing going on between 21 and 31. 21 is made up of 3 and a 7. 31 is a prime number. There are no common factors there. We are, we are, we are about to divide both sides by 31, you see? We are about to divide both sides by 31. 31 is goes away, and P equals this quantity. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that, since there is nothing common between 31 and 31, 217 must be some multiple of 31. Can you tell how many 31 must be 217? It must be 7. Why? Because of the unit digit here. Unit digit is 7. The unit digit is 7. Since the unit digit is 7, it cannot be 31 times 2. 31 times 2 will end up in a 2. 31 times 3 will end up in a 3. 31 times 5 will end up in a 5. It has to be 7. Let's, let's find out here. 31 times 7 must be 217. 
1 times 7 is 7 and 3 times 7 is 21. You see that? Which means 31 goes into 217 7 times. That is your answer. P equals 7 times 21. Whatever that happens to be. P equals 7 times 21. We need the room. Oh, we can do it right here. They all have to add up to 217. They all have to add up to 217. How much is 21 times 7? Let's do it here. 21 times 7 is 7 and 147. So P P is 147. P is 147. Q is a third of a P. Q is a third of a P. What's the third of 147? 147 over 3. How much is that? First of all, is that number even divisible by 3? Is that number even divisible by 3? Well, well, we'll find out. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 5 plus 7 is 12. Since the sum of the digits, since SUM sum of the digit is divisible by 3, the number itself must be divisible by 3. The number itself must be divisible by 3. Let's find out. How many 3's does 1 have? 1 has no 3. 1 has no 3. That 1 goes and joins the 4, becomes 14. How many 3's does four have? 14 have? How many 3's does 14 have? 14 has 4 3's. 4 3's are? 4 3's are 12. Once we take away 12 from the 14, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 27. And how many 3's does 27 have? 27 has 9 3's. There you go. 147 plus 49 plus R, which we are told is 7th. You see, here the 3 is cancelled out. R, in fact, is simply 7th of P. P over 7. P, we know, is 147. 147 over 7. That's very simple. How many, four, how many 7 does 14 have? 14 has two sevens. And how many seven does seven have? Seven has one seven. Now, only thing that we have to confirm is if 147 plus 49 plus 21, if these three numbers add up to 217, then our work is correct. Let's do it here. 147, 147 plus 49 plus 21. Keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed because if they add up to 217, we are home free. 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 7 is 17, 17 carry 1, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11, 11 carry 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, 5, call it. It works out. Our answer is indeed correct. Bye now.